All right, what's going on guys? So in this video, I'm gonna be maxing out on the squat, bench press, and deadlift. Now, the last time I did this was about six or seven months ago, and some of you guys may remember, I ended up hitting four plates, so 405 pounds on the squat, did that for just a single rep. Now, looking at this footage back, I don't think this was a true max attempt, but it was my first time putting this kind of weight on my back since my lower back injury. So I did think of this as sort of just a new starting place for me. Now, for the bench press, I ended up hitting 350 pounds, which I was also really happy with. And for the deadlift, ended up hitting 485 pounds, which I was also quite happy with, especially considering I hadn't touched that kind of weight in several years due to those injuries. Now, looking at this footage back, I don't think this was a true max attempt. Main call. And it's on the order of local report these individuals immediately to law enforcement. You're not sleeping well enough. Little cookie on the way to the gym. Check out the pump. Sources, sip curls are one of the most efficient exercises. He doesn't train hard at all. Have you, if you've ever seen his curls, are training. Good morning, goddammit. Good morning, goddammit. Stick to the program. Stick to the program. A little cookie on Good the way to the morning, gym. God damn it. Let's, Let's be going against what's in the scientific literature. <laughs> Wake up, Jeff. It's time to get big. Yeah. Crap, man. <laughs> six, six reps, damn, that's good. I think I could have done one more too, just saying. <laughs> Okay, so that was my max squat attempt. So this time I got four plates for six reps, which when I plug that into a one rep max calculator, I get 470 pounds. Now I do find the EXRX calculator to be reliable. However, as the rep count gets higher and higher, the validity of the equations it's based on gets lower and lower. But I would say something around 470 to 480 pounds is probably an accurate one rep max for me right now, especially since a couple weeks ago, I hit 455 pounds for a single quite easily at about an RP of eight or nine. And I should clarify that when I tested my maxes six months ago, I did it directly by working up to a single rep with something near 100% of my one rep max. Whereas this time I took a so-called AMRAP approach where I did 90% of my estimated one rep max for as many reps as possible. And then using the AMRAP results, you can figure out whether you've gained or lost strength indirectly. So according to the best data on this, a true max effort set with 90% of your one rep max should result in about three reps. So if you get less than three reps on your AMRAP, it means that your one rep max is probably lower than you thought, and maybe you've lost strength. If you get more than three reps, it means your one rep max is higher than you thought, and you've probably gained strength. So since I got six reps, which is more than three reps, tells me that my squat max is probably higher than I thought, and my strength is increasing. Okay, so watching this back from a different angle, a couple things I'm looking at here, the first is, I think I'm doing a much better job of bracing on these reps. So when I take my big breath of air in before I descend, you can see I'm breathing deep into my gut and the bar doesn't rise up on my back as much as it used to. I also think my depth is really good on these, so I'm getting below parallel, but I'm also not bottoming out the reps and wasting energy by just needlessly extending the range of motion. So from a strength perspective, you want your squats to be just deep enough, but not any deeper. And I think my reps do look consistent throughout this AMRAP. So my chest doesn't start caving forward. My hips don't start shooting up as my quads fatigue. And I think I'm doing a pretty good job of driving my knees out and thrusting my hips forward and using my glutes to push through that sticking point. So overall, I'm really pleased with how this set of squats went. I think it was honestly probably my best set of squats in years. Okay, now let's have a look at how my bench AMRAP went the next day. Today I'm gonna be hitting 315 pounds for as many reps as possible on the bench press. If I can get five or six reps, I'm gonna be happy. If I can get seven or eight reps, I'm gonna be really happy. Now Jeff, don't let your RPE get too Oh, this is high. an AMRAP test. Get, get, bro, get out of here. Come on, let's do it, man, come on. Let's go, bro. Easy, let's go. Yep. 
So 315 for eight reps at about an RP of 9.5 or 10. And plugging this back into the calculator, I get a one rep max of 391 pounds. Now I am a bit more skeptical of this figure because like I said earlier, these equations can easily overshoot the higher the rep count gets. So I'd be more conservative with my max estimate here and probably say something more like 365 to 375 pounds, especially since I haven't been really training with loads quite that heavy. And the heaviest I worked up to on this program was 345 for a double, which would put me closer to around 365 pounds as a max when I plug that in. So I think my technique on the AMRAP here also looked pretty solid. So it looks like the bar is coming down and slightly forward to the highest contact point on my chest. Then it moves slightly back and up after a slight pause. And the fact that I'm briefly pausing on these reps does make me feel even more optimistic about the future of my bench because in the past, I've only ever done 315 for eight reps with touch and go reps. So I'm counting this as an all time PR. And the fact that I'm sinking the bar into my chest is just personal preference. Some people seem to be stronger by softly pausing the bar, whereas others like myself can get more of a spring by letting the bar sink down a bit. And in powerlifting, both are illegal as long as the bar is pressed up without an additional sink after the pause. Okay, so I took one rest day and then I hit my deadlift AMRAP. So let's take a look. So this is probably the lift I was most disappointed with just because plugging it in, it only gives me about a one rep max of 495, which is only 10 measly pounds up from my last max testing. Um, but I think what happened here was probably some combination of accumulated central or mental fatigue from the previous two AMRAP tests. It was like my body was capable of doing more reps, but my brain just wouldn't let my muscles do it. And I know my true deadlift one rep max is in fact higher than 495 because just about two weeks ago, I pulled 495 for two reps. So if I just plug that in instead, I get 509 as a one rep max, which I think is more realistic for me right now. So the silver lining here with the deadlift is that, well, now there's a lot more room for progress in my next training cycle. And what I wanna focus on moving forward is my flexibility and mobility. I'm finding that my hamstrings and hip abductors start to feel really tight when I get into that wide sumo stance, which then causes my hip position to deviate simply because I'm finding it hard to get into a comfortable lifting position. So that's something I'm gonna work on over the next few months by doing some dynamic and static stretching for my hamstrings, adductors, groin, and inner thighs just after training to make sure that sumo stance is feeling more comfortable. So I wanna put all of this together with three key takeaways that you guys can apply to your own training if you have strength goals, because when I add all of that together, even going with the most conservative estimates, I've still added at least 100 pounds to my total strength in about six months, which at my level of advancement, I'm pretty pleased with. So how did I do that? Well, first of all, there's probably some muscle memory effect going on. Um, I had built a high level of strength before, then I got injured, and now I'm building it back. Now, this is probably relevant to most of you right now because not everyone has access to basic training equipment due to the pandemic. So if you're forced to take a step back, whether due to injury or the quarantine or something else, once you get back to structured lifting again, you should be able to reach your old PRs relatively quickly. Second, in my video on overcoming injury, I discussed a study showing that a successful return is underpinned by developing self-confidence. At a certain point, you need to shift your mindset from seeing yourself as someone who's injured to someone who is strong and capable of lifting again. So I built that confidence back myself by gradually lifting heavier and heavier until I got to the point that I could really start pushing myself hard again. And it really is as simple as that. 
if you want to get stronger at a certain point, you just can't be scared to lift heavy. Now, it may sound obvious, but that doesn't make it any less true. If you want to get strong, you've got to lift heavy. Now, third, I think I've developed a mature lifting mentality at this point in my training career. I don't lift with my ego anymore, meaning I'm not dead set on hitting specific numbers just because I want to impress myself or someone else. And I don't think I ever got to the point where I let my technique take a back seat to lifting heavier. Now, a couple other quick things that I think helped. Since the quarantine, I have been eating in a moderate caloric surplus, which when you couple that with hard and smart training, definitely can supercharge your strength progress. Also, because gyms are closed at the moment, I've been forced to focus much more on the barbell lift now, I've still been running the same high frequency full body program as usual. It's just that I've had to make some modifications. So not having the leg pressed has allowed me to squeeze in a few more high bar squats. Not having a shoulder press machine means I've been doing much more overhead pressing, which definitely has had more strength transfer to my bench press than a machine would. So I found that even just modifying these bodybuilding exercises to be more barbell oriented has resulted in more strength specific transfer, which isn't that surprising. So I've run through my high frequency program three times now, and it's been fantastic for both strength and physique gains for me. I think this is the best progress that I've made in years on both fronts. But today I started writing my next program, which is gonna be more of a true power building plan with about a 50-50 mix of strength and hypertrophy, or maybe even slightly more focused toward the strength side. Um, so I'll definitely be keeping you guys posted with how I'm making up with that. And as usual, I'll make sure I run it through myself and with a few clients before I make it publicly available on my website. And as always, the best way to stay up with new releases from from me like this is to just join my newsletter, which I'll link down below. All right, so that's it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys all here in the next one.